Hey YouTube, uh, Gabe here with another deck profile. We are uh, finally bringing you that uh, young legend Dragod content with your boys uh, Double Buddy Horuses. Uh, I don't know when this is going to get uploaded, but a little bit ago we got the confirmation that their SD forms are bats. So they're adorable. This deck is honestly super fun. It's not one of the best decks out there right now, but it's just such a blast to pilot and it's so fun. So if you have, and it's also getting support in um, a set six. So if you have the scratch to put it down, uh, honestly, I'd recommend it. So flag legend world, nothing special. Buddies are both Magma and Frieza Horus. Frieza, if, for those of you who don't know, Frieza has an effect where if it is the buddy, you can help, uh, you can let Magma Horus be a secondary buddy. It specifies this Magma Horus though. In the trial deck, there's another version of both. So you have to have the two corresponding versions, which is why you can see that they have uh, the Eye of Horus or Eye of Wizards. I forget which one that's supposed to be in their uh, connecting artwork. So they're the buddies because um, both of their effects activate when they're buddy called, so they kind of have to be, but also there's so many cards in the deck that like activate when you buddy call or help you buddy call or just help you with your buddies that you need to have like the most optimal buddy possible, which is obviously going to be these two. And I know I just, this is probably going to be a little bit contradictory because I just said that the buddies are super important, but we are only running three copies of each. The reason why is because you kind of need to see both at the same time. Because if you only see one, it doesn't really do anything. And it can get kind of clunky. And also they cost two gauge, so running a lot doesn't really help. Also, like, there's ways to search them and tutor them out. Like, you can salvage them if they're in drop zone from either gauge or from earlier in the game. Or whatever. So there's, like, so many ways that you can, like, get them back that you really... And I mean, you really don't need to run more than three. You run three just because you want to make sure you can see them from your ways of tutoring, but more than three honestly feels bricky. So, and especially when we get Voltic Raw, running a third buddy is going to be like, you really got to conserve that space. But um, I should probably say what these cards do. So, Frieza Horus is a drag god, so it can be used at four in any deck, and also has the double buddy effect with Flame Deity Magma Horus, so you can have them both be your buddies. Call cost is two gauge, and um, when it enters the field by a buddy gift, you can call Magma Horus from hand without paying Magma's call cost. And if you have, um, and also all drag gods and kings, which are the items in the deck, cannot be uh, destroyed or bounced by card effects. So, uh, it helps you unlock the power of Magma Horus, and it gives you um, protection, which is pretty cool. Unfortunately, it's an ability, so any way that you can get your abilities nullified will kind of stop the deck from functioning like uh, Jealousy, Demonic, Dragon, Envy. So my other deck counters this deck, which is very fun, especially when I want to teach people this game, because somebody just ends up feeling really sad. Then Magma Horus, uh, same, um, it has the reverse stat line, but same cost. So Frieza Horus is a 5-2-8, while Magma has an 8-2-5. Also a drag god and double body with Frieza. And call cost is two gauge, but that's going to be omitted because you're supposed to be calling it through Frieza's effect anyways. And when it enters the field by Frieza's effect through the buddy gift, uh, you can destroy two of your opponent's cards and draw two. The destruction is not conditional for the draw, so you can pop, if, if you're going first, you can call Frieza and Magma and still draw two cards just to give you more advantage. And at the start of the attack phase, if you have Frieza on the if you have Frieza on the field as well, all Dragods uh, that are size one for the turn get triple attack. So they if you have both on the field for your battle phase, they'll have triple attack. But if you have ways of either calling during the battle phase or if calling other Dragons during the battle phase, those cards will get triple attack too. Because it doesn't say all cards currently on the field get triple. It's all Dragons for the turn. It's a change in game state, not in card text. So that's pretty cool. There is a way of being able to call during the battle phase just to get a bunch of attacks out. Uh, very cool. Uh, love the Egypt aesthetic and love the fire and ice duality. This deck is just very... This deck honestly hits all of the aesthetic points I needed for a deck. Um, next, running four copies of a Valkyrie All-Knowing All of It All. Um, this card is so old, I'm assuming all of you know what it does, and if you don't, I just said its name look it up it's that known of a card um 
want to give it four because the deck runs a lot of cards that, that make you discard. The reason why is because you because you have two buddies, you need cons uh, a way to consistently see them both at the same time. But if you're basically getting two cards off of one card effect, you need a discard to make it break even instead of it being a plus one. So you run Alwadal just as discard fodder because when it's discard, you get a gauge and a draw. Also, you run one great spell, so its first effect actually can do something. It almost never will. Maybe one in a hundred games. But it's there for the option if you really, really think you need it. Next, we are running four copies of the Devoting Mummy Maker, Jutalash. I don't speak... Um, I don't know how to pronounce these things, so uh, sorry. Oh, wait, I just realized I... Um, I'm using my gold Sark mat. That's actually really convenient. That actually was genuinely not planned out. Nice. Uh, 411 size 1 legend dragon. On call, if you have another legend dragon on the field, you can heal and draw. But its main effect that you're going to be using if you don't need the consistency buff is when it is discarded, you get to charge 2. So basically, it has two great utility effects, basically just based on what you need more at the moment. Both of them are really good, life in a draw or gauge, because this deck can consume a decent amount of gauge. Next, we are running three copies of the Starry Knight Enchanter Durik, which is a 3-1-3 size 1. Uh, hard once per turn, because it's a named ability. You can d uh, drop a Legend Dragon card, so monster, spell, item, whatever. Uh, check top 5, add one card that has Dragod in the attribute, and one card that has um, Legend Dragon in the attribute. They don't need to be monsters, they can be anything. You add those to your hand and the rest go to the bottom, so you get some nice Tsukuyomi style set, uh, stacking. I'm only running it at 3 because because it is a named ability. If you see 2, it's not really going to do anything. But more importantly, well not more importantly, but just another reason, is because you actually do run a few, quite a few cards that aren't Legend Dragons. It's not a bunch, but it's definitely noticeable. So there have been few moments where I really haven't had many at least good discard targets so i think running it at three is good also the consistency is just really good so but i think three is honestly fine just based off of general game speed next the answer to cards like envy is uh two copies of breeze bearer good egg four two one size one um if it's in the center all Le legend dragons on the field can't have their abilities nullified and if it's destroyed, you can stand your buddy zone. So it has that really cool utility effect of standing your buddy zone, but it also offers your guys protection. So if your field is him and both Horuses, your abilities can't be nullified and they can't be destroyed or bounced by card effects. So they have to basically be rested or else you're getting seven attacks minimum. So very good card. Really like it. I like it more than Buddy Option, because while Buddy Option goes to the soul, this card stops continuous or counter abilities, where Buddy Option, they have a chance to respond. Because if Blue Horse gets envied or negated, you're, shit, you're, you're up shit's creek. Uh, next is two copies of the Junior Long Spear Warrior, Leem. Uh, fantastic card. I love him. Uh, one, two, one, size zero. At the end of the turn, if it was dropped by a card effect, you can add a... Um, and you have a Legend Dragon on the field, you can add a copy of itself from drop to your hand, and if you do, charge and heal one. So basically, while you have to wait a turn for it to come... You have to wait till the end phase for it to come back so you can't, like, reuse that effect immediately. The fact that it recurs itself and it can just keep recurring itself is really good and also offers the gauge in life. And unlike something like Durek, it's not a hard once per turn. It just targets a copy of itself. So... If you have two copies, if you discard two, you can just use both of them and just heal two, gauge two. So, it's a great card. Um, not many other options, so we're down to the tech slots. We're running one copy of the uh, Heavy Shield of Aju... What the fuck is that name? You can't read, read this. Ajuvancy uh, Calxon. It's not a good card. It's a 3-2-3 three, three, size 1. Your sh cards with shields in their name can't be nullified. And if it's discarded by an effect you can stand your buddy zone you have enough ways of standing your buddy zone as as is it's really not that necessary it's going to be coming out the moment we get sacked six but it can come in handy so there's a reason why it's at one another card i like is a one copy of wario of zero zeal terius six two one size one call cost is one gauge and top deck goes into the soul uh it has penetrate soul guard and when a, a legend dragon on your left or right attacks you burn one so if you have this and double horses who will have triple attack, um, that is six attacks, so that's at two crits each, so that's 
12 crit in attack damage and 6 in burn damage. That's theoretically 18. That's, you can theoretically get 20 on board with that uh, that trio alone, which is sick. And then the uh, the big ol' ultimate spice, we got that one copy of Overturned Ice Emperor Miseria, because uh, who doesn't love Fiber Jar? Uh, for those of you who don't know, we got an 8, 2, 6, size 3, 2 gauge, and it you put a spell from your drop zone into its soul, and Overturn, 2 gauge during the main phase, shuffle all cards from hand, drop, gauge, and field uh, from both players' sides into their decks. They draw 6 and charge 2. Just reset the board, save itself and any card that has soul. Also, double attack, soul guard, lifelink 2. Um... It can be a blowout. There's a lot of cards out there, like, the best spells are, like, you can only... The best shield spells, like, you can only cast this if you have, like, this attribute on your field. If you just board wipe them with its effect, which is basically what it does, unless they have a card that procs that with, um, no cards on the field, they don't... They lose. Also, you know, sometimes you just need to go full the full reset because your hand is that shit. Uh, four copies of the star spell, uh, Deju Mao which is stupid. So first, you stand your buddy zone. Just, that's just inherent to the card for no reason. And then you search your deck for two monsters with different names, but they both need Dragod and Legend Dragon in their attribute. If you add it up to, if you add it up the full two, you gotta drop something. So basically, this card lets you search for Frieza and Ice Horse by itself, but also if you had already buddy called, you get to buddy call again. This card's, insane and you can just discard alwadal to basically just go plus two also look how beautiful this art is like honestly even if i didn't like the egyptian aesthetic which i definitely do the art on a lot of these cards is just absolutely beautiful bushi really hit it out of the park with this deck not gonna lie uh then there's three copies of the arcane crown al coronation so good utility card you can choose and use one of the following two but you can only use either effect once per turn you can either search your deck for a king item and add it to your hand for no cost or you s can add two legend dragon monsters with different names from drop to hand if you added the full two you got to drop something but like if you add two cards that have effects when they're discarded say um leem and jute the Lush, you just add both and then drop one of them immediately so it's basically just add one and then plus off of the other so it's a great utility card uh, only needed at three, that's because you have a, so many utility cards, and it's a hard once per turn. Next is three copies of uh, Diliculium Pantheon. Um, running it at three just because I do want to see it. The fact that it's discard for its cost really helps the, with synergize with the deck, but more importantly, the deck's defensive capabilities could are honestly a little bit lackluster, and it's just another way of just getting through defensively. So all size 2 or less monsters can't be destroyed by effects, but if you have Ice Horse, it already does that job. But also, its main effect is counter during your opponent's turn, once per turn per copy, because this you can have as many copies as you want set. Drop a card to rest an opponent's monster or item. So you can drop, like, all Wadal basically to make this card free, so it's pretty good. Also, the fact you can have multiple set really makes the card kind of nutty. Now, um, on to the... Uh, my mo my personal controversial opinion, uh, Retainer Shield, this card sucks. So, what it does is, you can only cast it if your opponent's attacking during their, um, turn. You pay a life to nullify the attack. Then, if you have a dragon on the field, you can drop a card to put it to your hand. So, why does this card suck? Some of you are probably going to be like, but Gabe, it lets you discard a card, so you can discard all Wadal and Jutalash to get resources. First off... That's That part isn't mandatory, so you could theoretically not use that effect because if you don't have discard targets. So what the card does is it is pay a life to nullify the attack. This is six years after we got the first shield, Green Dragon Shield, which said nullify the attack and heal one. So Green Dragon Shield not only doesn't take away your life, it actually gives you some. And this is the power crept version of it. And then you're going to be like, but yeah, you have to pay the life because it allows itself to be recurred, and that's how you balance it. But it recurs itself by making you go minus. So no matter what you are doing, you're going neg to use this card. You are paying a life 
on a shield in God Dragod's year of 2019. So, no. I'm running it at 2, mostly because I have to, because Legend World doesn't have a lot of great generic shields, and the fact that it does have the... Di the best thing about this card is the discard effect, honestly. Um, if Delicium Pantheon was not during your opponent's turn, I'd probably just run that at 4 and cut this just to proc discard effects. Uh, I'm so excited to get rid of this card. The... The di like, if your hand is big enough and you can discard a bunch of stuff and proc their blaze, it's cool, but, like, the fact that you have to pay a life each time to do it is insane. It would have still been balanced if it was free and you just had to discard to reuse it, because it's Drag Odds Year of 2019, Bushi, come on. Uh, next is two copies of the King's Guidance on a sauce. Uh, very cool card indeed. You can only cast it during either player's battle phase. Uh, cost is two life. And you can bounce up to two size one drag odds from your field and then call two drag odds from hand without paying their call cost. So basically you use this as a means of getting extra attacks. If you have both drag odds already on the field, so you they have triple attacks. You get six attacks, seven if you have a center. You cast this to bounce ice and Frieza and then you just call them back to get an additional six more because that's how Magma Op's uh, skill is worded. But also, because they're, you're calling them, if your buddies are standing, you can buddy call from this and also get the destruction and draw off of Magma Wars. And because it's during either player's turn, you could theoretically use this during your opponent's battle phase to bounce and buddy call on their turn and then pop and draw two during their battle phase just to really hurt them, which is a very cool play to make. Uh, next, two copies of Breath and Guard. Pay two to nullify a spell. We do, you don't run Berserker because that card sucks. So the recursion doesn't matter. Um, spells are powerful. I don't know if any of you got that memo in 2019. Nullifying them's cool. And this deck, if you get the right setup, can get gauge like crazy. So the two gauge doesn't matter. Next, the uh, is great spell Viderstot got reprinted in the set. You can only cast this at the end of the first battle on your opponent's turn. Pay two gauge and two left to end the attack phase. I know I complained about the deck's defensive capabilities earlier, and this is a very powerful card, but the thing is it's very cost-heavy, and the cost is to balance it. I'm not complaining that it's a 2-gauge and 2-life as its cost, but the thing is, because it costs that much, having multiple in your hand can get kind of bricky, because you might not be able to activate all of them, but also, because it only activates at the end of the first turn, the first battle of the turn, you're only using one a turn, so if you have two in your hand, one of them is just going to be dead until you've used the other one. But it's a very powerful card, nonetheless, and worth running. Uh, then we're running two copies of Dragon or Bark. You can only cast if you have two Legend Dragons, pay a gauge, draw two, heal one. It's a consistency card. I, felt, I only feel the need to run it too just because um, you have a lot of consistency cards in this deck and running it at two is fine. The fact that you need two on the field already for setup can get a bit of, be a bit of an issue. It's very rare, but I've noticed where I'm like, I don't want to call anything, but I need you just to get the draw. Uh, two copies of Engelgard. Uh, drop a card to draw two, very strong with the deck. Um, I only have two. If I had a third, I'd probably be running it. But I don't want to buy a trial deck just for the one copy of it. I think it's out, sold out on DCG Play the last time I checked. But it's a very good card. Uh, next on the items, we're just running one of each. So we got stick, stick, chair. Shout out to the uh, old uh, Yu-Gi-Oh players that got that from, like, what format? Was that 2013, 2014? Um, stick number one is Scepter of Mathoth. Or this is Scepter of Madon, I'm sorry. Pay a life to equip it. Legend Dragons on your left and right uh, get 5k power. And act, you can rest itself to add a Legend Dragon monster from uh, drop the hand. So you can just recur those cards that have discard effects. Uh, Staff of Matov, uh, pay a gauge. Um, it's uh, all size 1 Dragons can't be destroyed or returned to hand by your opponent's card effects. I mean, sure, but also... Blue Horse already does that anyways, but it also does greater than size one if that ever becomes relevant, and also items, not just itself, So, but it's protection nonetheless. And um, counter, during your attack phase, you can uh, rest this card, stand a Legend Dragon, and draw a card. It's a draw, basically, and yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, next is Scepter, a Seat of Absolutes, Hieratic Throne. Uh, pay a gauge to equip. If a Dragon would, uh, leave the field, you can put this card in drop instead. 
and act rest itself check top five out of legend dragon monster from those five to hand bomb deck the rest so it's kind of like a worse direct because you have less targets both in that you can't add a le uh, legend and or a drag god it has to be a legend but also um you can only get one instead of two but it's free for each turn because it's an item so you can just keep doing it and it's also free so you don't need to discard off of direct Honestly, the item lineup for the deck is kind of eh. Like, these items are fine, but they're really just not, like, w wow worthy as some of the other ones out there. Like, you have items that prevent the ability of nullifying effects and of, like, destruction. And this is like if a card would leave the field, sack it. So, like, the items are fine. They're not great, but, like, they're worth winning just because they're really good utility cards. And lastly is, uh, we're running one copy of Forbidden Light of Double Deity, uh, Aklar Fado. Honestly, this card's gonna be getting cut after set six. I think I've used it maybe once or twice. Uh, you can only cast it if you have a, uh, Dragod and a King on the field. So you have to have, uh, wait, do you need two? No, you have to have a Dragon. So you have to at least have one of the horses as an item. Pay two gauge, deal two for uh, each drag god on the field, then immediately end the final phase. So, this is a cool card. It's gonna get better after set six, just because because we're getting Voltic Raw, you can theoretically deal six off of two, which is like cool. But honestly, th the setup and speed of it just kind of ass. So it's probably not gonna be run, but it could also be wrong. I have not tested with set six at all, but it's pretty neat. Maybe it's, I'm not, I would, was thinking of cutting it because it's bad now, but when we get the third buddy, it'll just be even better because it's six damage instead of four. Um, but yeah, Jesus, this lasted 20 minutes, what the hell? Um, this deck is super fun, definitely recommend building it, it's a blast. Uh, thank you for watching, like, comment, subscribe, I'll play Buddy Fight, Gabe from Nexus Core signing out.